Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to spend more time looking at express routing and get some more practice with routing and a little a few more advanced options. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a directory called express routing. I'm going to cd into that directory and now I'm going to use npm init to make my new application, specifically the package.json file. Package name, version, all this is fine. Oops, I put index.js instead of app.js. So let's do that again. App.js. There's this is fine. Let's clear that out. Look at our package.json. Yep, looks good. Next thing we need to do is we're going to actually install Express, npm i express. You remember i is shortened for install. Okay, that has finished downloading. If I want to, I can look at my package.json file and we can see that we now have Express as a dependency. It's been added and my node modules folder was populated. Next thing I want to do is to touch app.js to create app.js. Here it is. I'm going to go ahead and show you this all typed out again because I want you to get more practice. Please make sure you are coding along. Please make sure you are not just watching me do this. I want you to actually get the, the experience coding along. So the first thing we do with Express is just import it. So const express equals require express. And then because this is just boilerplate for Express, const app equals express that we call as a function. An app you can name whatever you want, however the convention is app and it makes everybody's life easier if you just use app. Then we define our routes and then down at the bottom we do app.listen and it takes two parameters. The first one is the port. If you remember mine is set to port 3000. And the second one is a callback function and I'm just going to make it say app console.log app listening on port 3000. Now let's go ahead and just run it. See if we get any errors. If we don't get any errors then we know it's working. Alright, it's working even though it doesn't do anything yet because we haven't defined any routes. Let's set up the root route. app.get root and then we have our callback function request and response inside of there you do stuff. So I'm gonna, all I'm going to do is response.send this is the root route. And then app.get and we'll do we'll do another login request response response.send this is the login route. Let's save that no daemon app.js and make sure these routes are working as we think they should. So let's refresh. This is the root route, which is exactly what we expect. And now if we do go to login, it should say this is the login route. So we've got those routes set up, but what happens if I go to just a random string of gibberish after that route? I don't have a route set for this yet. But if I go to google.com slash random string of gibberish, they have a 404 page. So the request URL was not found on the server, so they, they've created this. They don't get this ugly error, they made their own. So what we can do is we can make a catch-all route, or a 404 page route, basically. To do that, app.get asterisk, and then request response, response.send, that's a 404. And just for demonstration purposes, let's put this up here. Save. Notice that no daemon restarts our server for us. Refresh. That's a 404. So we can put in anything we want, and it will hit that because asterisk is a wild card, meaning it'll match anything. The problem with the way we have this set up right now is let's go to login. Hmm, that's a 404. 
but we have a login route right here. The reason for this is because the way that Express works is it checks down the routes in order, and whenever the first one is hit, it stops checking the rest. So it checks, does this match here? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, it does this, does the callback, and then stops. If the answer is no, it goes to the next one. Does this match? No? Okay, go to the next one. Does this match? Yep. Then it runs this and stops looking. So the way that you need to do 404s is always put them at the bottom. Put them as the last thing there so that it checks all of the other routes first. So if I come here now to log in, log in route, and yet if I still go to my random gibberish, it still hits the 404. So that's how you implement 404s with Express, is you use the asterisk and you put it as the last route so that it makes sure that it tries all the other ones first. The next thing I wanted to talk about with Express are what are called route parameters. So to give you an example of this, let's go to Reddit. Reddit.com slash r slash soccer. So you'll see here that this route, we have reddit.com slash r, and then we have soccer. Now this word soccer is the, um, the subreddit name. It is a route parameter. Reddit did not come into their app.js, or in their case they use Python, but for our demonstration purposes, they didn't come into their app.js or whatever their routing is and define a route for every single subreddit because there are literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of these subreddits. Okay? So, and there, there's new ones being created every single day. Any user can create a new subreddit if they want to. So it would be insane for them to have to come through and put in every single subreddit to create a route for every single subreddit. So instead, they use what are called route parameters, where they treat this as a variable. So if I go to all, I think it's three W's. Yeah, this is pictures of, of cats and dogs and, and cute animals for the most part. So this is a different parameter. You'll notice that the, the URL is the same other than that one parameter. If I go back to soccer, it gives different stuff based on that variable. The way that you do this in Express is with a colon. So let's create a new route, app.get, let's do slash um, users slash username. Notice that there's a colon in front of that username. And now request response, res.send, this is the username route. And now no daemon will refresh our thing. And if I come in and I go to slash users slash username, works fine. This is the username route. However, because this is a colon, I can use anything I want here. Users slash whatever, it still goes to this is the username route because it treats this as a variable. And the cool part is that we have access to that variable inside of the request object. So instead of just sending back this string, let's make it a template string. The submitted username is, and then we can do request.params.username. params is the object on the request object that contains any type of um, parameters we define right here. So let's save, restarting, and refresh. The submitted username is that. I put Josh, submitted username is Josh. And you can put anything you want in there. And that's exactly what Reddit did. They just said colon subreddit like that in their, their route definitions, and that way it, treated, it treats that as a variable. To give you another example, let's go to Amazon. Amazon.com, and let's just click on a random product, um, makeup remover. You can see up here, we have the um, parameter right there. Neutrogena remover, cleansing towelette, waterproof. And then we have a lot of other stuff in here because Amazon has a lot more advanced um, routing than we do or you're going to. But the important part is that this is right here, amazon.com slash whatever the thing is. Let's look down and find some related products here, uh, frequently bought together. You'll see that, that has changed. Waterproof towelette individually. Um, let's look at another one. Bunch of balloons. 
Bugs Billions Pack, Amazon exclusive. That's just the parameter that they've set up. They did not sit here and create a different route for every single one of their millions of products. They just defined the parameters in their routing scheme. So let's do something like that. App.get slash products slash product ID, or just ID shorthand. Request response. Response.send. This is the page for the product with ID of request.params.id. And now if I come over here and go to slash products slash whatever, this is the page for the product with ID of whatever, or ID of that. That's how routing parameters work. Notice that this is now a dynamic web page. We are returning different data depending on the user input. The user is inputting this URL, products, and then whatever their, the ID of their product is, and we are returning different HTML for each user for each time they put in a different product ID. A couple more things about this is that you can use more than one. So products slash ID slash comments slash comment ID. So now we have two of those. Terms ID with the comment ID of request.params.comment ID. So now if I go to products ID, comments ID, products ID slash comments slash my comment ID here. There we go. We can use both. So you can do that as many times as you want. You can nest that as many times as you need to in order to get what, you, what you're looking for, in order to, to get the functionality that you need. Note that this is not a wild card. Okay, so I cannot, like for example, let's get rid of all this extra stuff. Just go back to the product slash ID and let's make sure that still works. rid of that. Save and refresh. Yep, so that still works. So I cannot, this is not a wild card, this is not a catch-all. If I go to products slash ID whatever and I go to slash comments, it's going to give me the 404. This is not a catch-all. This just looks for the very next thing, the very next parameter, and note that the parameters are delimited by slashes. So slash, slash, slash. If I didn't have this slash and I go there, it works fine because that treats that all as the same parameter. You'll notice it says comments right here, but as soon as I add that slash back, or if I add another slash or whatever, it's going to give me that 404 because it's hitting this route. It says nope, it doesn't match that anymore, so it jumps down here to the 404. In this video we did a few things. We set up a 404 route using the wildcard character inside of Express, which is the asterisk, and we make sure to put that at the bottom of all of our other routes because the way Express works is it checks through the routes one at a time, and then it matches, the first one it matches, it sends and stops checking the rest. So if we put this anywhere but the bottom, it'll match, and then it, the, nothing else beneath it will get hit. So this always has to be at the bottom for our 404 page. We also talked about route parameters and how you use the colon to set those up, and whenever you do, Users can go there and it will treat this as a variable that you can access on the request.params.whatever object. We talked about how you can do that multiple times. Products ID slash comments slash comment ID and how you can access both of those request.params.id and request.params.comment ID and you can do that as many times as you want. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.